Welcome to another Let's Talk Paranormal. And as promised, Larry Hunter is back in the studio with us tonight for part two of Ancient Egypt. Welcome back, Larry. <laughs> Thank you for having me again. <laughs> You're welcome. You see, I was telling everybody last week, you know, a wealth of information which you have. And uh, unfortunately, we can't. Half an hour, it's gone. Yeah, 30 and minutes. Like, I couldn't believe the time went as quick as it did. And I don't know. So let's get right to let's the see questions. see what we can do and, tonight. Yes. Okay, when we were talking about the pyramids last week, uh, one thing we didn't cover was how we thought they were built. What's your assumption on that? Poured. 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 But really? when we think of cement today, we use rock. And when we think of aggregate to the ancient ones, we have to think of flat coins. Right. And these would be the aggregate that would be used uh, in the mix of the blocks. And I think, you know, I've showed you these before, but hmm. these are the, the, the coins that make up the composition of all the blocks, of all the causeways, the plateau, and the pyramid itself. So when you find these and you don't see any other uh, element other than this aggregate, and then when they're put together, they make hard pieces of, of, of stone like this. This is basically, it's the aggregate mixed into this, and then this is what they would have as concrete, where today we have rock in, instead. Well, if we're talking about a higher intelligence making these, wouldn't well, we intelligence that had the knowledge of it, I wouldn't say it's higher. They just knew something that we haven't rediscovered. Well, let me tell you something. I did a little bit of research myself, and I want to put to you, Larry, um, <laughs> some thoughts that some people had on this. Uh -huh. Who, let me see, who built the pyramids? Um, with, or how were the pyramids built? With the enormous force of levitation possessed by the eye of second sight. And they go on to say, um, what, what does the eye mean exactly? There is a single point in the exact center of every person's visual consciousness which gleams like a faint star, intermittently about six inches before the brow, even in total darkness. We know from modern brain research that any such consciousness is coming from the electrical activity of some corresponding point somewhere in the physical brain. The pyramid texts describe a non-physical island or soul of immortal consciousness, which is initially attached to the physical gleaming star in the brain. This completely non-physical island of consciousness is the eye of second sight. What do you say to that? The barriers between spirit and flesh are in the realms of where this would be. I think we all have the ability to access God through our own self. And so that pituitary or that part of the, of the body that's asleep, because in the ancient times, they had a cloud network over the planet and the pituitary extended out. I think it's just in the area where they had the, the blue horn that came out. And then when the sun was visible, these people were the blue people and they went underground. There's dimensions of this is that the pyramid is, is a place that you could leave your body and take your soul out and go into the universe and come back and get into the body. Mm -hmm. This is sort of, uh, it's hard to understand, but that's what a lot of this leads us to believe through the ancient Book of the Dead and, and, right. and what was going on with Osiris and back. But it's, it's, it's not something that I know a lot about where I'm looking at the, the stone, the aggregate, the mix, mm -hmm. and the, the layout. And the kind all of nuts of, and bolts to it all. Right. I, I keep it into a scientific area. Right. I mean, I'm not ignorant to the, to no, the, to the possibilities. No, I just wanted to put that to you. Let's, let's discuss the Orion aspect of this because these pyramids are aligned to Orion, correct? The Great Pyramid is, is the mirror of the Al Natak in the belts of Orion. Now, what does this mean, Larry? It means that we have a celestial equator and we have a terrestrial equator, all right, on the Earth. And we mark latitudes and longitudes, but in the stars we call it right ascension and declination. Well, if we can marry the two where the, we can see the Orion group to a scale and rediscover the scale with which it was all done, then we can see that they built these locations to mirror the actual scale and picture of the Orion group mm -hmm. to let us know something of great 
that we don't know now. The texts say Osiris died, he went through his fortress to become Orion. And that shaft out of the king's chamber points to that star. So if you're a straw and you're going out and you can see the star, it's easy to contemplate getting there. Right. But coming back now to an earth that's spinning and lining up to that pyramid at the exact time where that soul can come back in is what's kind of hard for us to, to understand. But in the physics of light, blink your eye once, seven and a half times around the planet. Now they're coming in at those speeds and they're going to hit that little eight or four inch window mm -hmm. and go back down into the pyramid and reconnect with the, the body. That's some awesome physics that it's, that's the way that they understood the universe and interacted with it. That's long gone in the annals of history and only maintains itself in myth and ritual. But it's there if you look to the science and what's being said in, the, in the, mm. the myth and the ritual. What would be so important, though, about that, taking the soul up to the star system? Well, it's not something that we have figured out how to do since the times of ones like Osiris or Enoch, who went and didn't die, and Jesus, who was crucified and three days later was, was uh, transcended or transfigured. Um, those are things that that's what all this for us as readers today are in pursuit of that original knowledge that gives us purpose in the universe right. of life not just here God's the God of many worlds and this is just one of them right exactly what about the Mayan uh, pyramids there has to be some connection here do blink you your eye once seven times it's <laughs> stitching every pyramid in the planet not wow. only the Mayan Mexico it's in China and South America and uh, even under the water there are pyramids all around the planet it's an ancient knowledge well I read something very interesting recently and this is of a scientist you may have heard of him Greg Little and he went to find the Yucatan Hall of Records and he traveled to Guatemala uh, has fantastic information of the fact that the Hall of Records exists in the jungles of Central America, buried in the ruins of Mayan civilization, which were apparently predicted by Edgar Cayce, the Sleeping Prophet. What, and they were also predicted or described as being in several locations around the planet. So if one was destroyed, that it you would still have the records intact. I think that they're still intact on the Giza Plateau, you know, where I see the stories of people going underground and what they're finding is busted this and that, but I've also heard of them bringing up objects that are awesome. And such as? Such as... <laughs> can you say? <laughs> I would like to can hold on it, the, the description, because I have drawings of them. I've actually held them in my hands, but the people that would have them, they want millions of dollars for them. And I just, well, can I at least look at it, you know? But they come off of diamond-studded bases, and they're unique. I, I, it's, it's hard to describe what front surface silvered mirrors are like and the grooves, but all this is inside of a glass that is, is unusual in its nature but the optics of seeing what happens with light around this thing got my, piqued my interest really mm. quick. But like anything, it's just to hold it in your hands and give it back. And now maybe in the second time with the giant, that there may be more of these items that, that are still go available, but <laughs> I don't want to go there yet. Tell me something, Larry. Has, and, and be honest, has your life ever been threatened? Yes. They, it has. Uh, once in Frankfurt, they tried to have me killed, and somehow I don't understand all this, but through the mechanics of the Egyptian special forces, they were in there in Frankfurt to catch this person that was waiting in the, behind a trash can on the way down but connecting flights. Mm -hmm. But they put lines up, stopped all of it, and they caught him. And then later when I was back in Egypt, part of their CID, like our CIA, had me for four hours. And at the end of this long conversation, it was a fabulous talk, <laughs> he, I asked him, I said, oh, by the way, did somebody try to kill me in Frankfurt? And he said, yes. And I said, well, thank you very much for, you know, wow. not you, letting that happen. They think you're getting a little bit too close to information that you shouldn't know about. Yeah, there's a lot that would say that. All the chairmen, when I'm there, and I met them all, and everyone that I've met is dead or fired, and now it's the, the one that has the seat is also sort of not to me legitimate but well what is what is the role of the Egyptian government in all of this what do they know and how much do they care uh, well I've studied this but it's like something that isn't touchable every time I go to new areas that I'm researching I always find the army on top of it digging and they'll escort me and say don't come within three kilometers here again 
and I'm only seven miles out in the desert alone. Why, why are you here in this place where I'm coming to find colliding particles? Or there's a mosque on it and you have to have permission from antiquities to go to this mosque. So right. either the mosques are on them or the army. So I'm not so sure that the army isn't aware of the awesomeness of what's underground. Mm -hmm. But f the secret Egypt, that's kept secret and soon maybe it will come public. But the other Egypt is the romantic Egypt, Pharaoh, Cleopatra, and the stories and dramas of, 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 of Egypt. And whilst you just mentioned Pharaoh, we have a question from um, a, a viewer that emailed us. A question to you, Larry. Okay. And uh, he asks, is there any evidence that any Pharaoh was laid to rest in the Great Pyramid? There is no evidence of any Pharaoh anywhere, ever, in any pyramid. Really? the ones in Saqqara, Doser, no bodies have ever been found inside the pyramids. No mummified. No anything. mummified. But now there's a piece I want to jump up on and that's Osiris himself. Through the text of, of uh, Ena, or was it um, the pyramids of uh, Unus, where they had the pyramid text describing Osiris' death, where he went from Heliopolis across a body of water, laid in rest for 70 days, and then down the ro ro roads of Rasta. Those people are saying the body is in the, in the fortress by those texts. But you would think, oh, well, then we should find the body. But nobody's looking mm -hmm. because Pharaoh of, of the Osiris nature is a myth. But then when I get into the village and people that have been inside and through UNESCO and gone up and seen the body of Osiris sleeping, not mummified. This really? is why the mummy is a little different. This is laying a body down and the soul is traveling. And the people that have seen him over a period of 20 years, two times, said the second time that this body was getting stronger. And he's just laying on a slab of stone that has a force field around it. And this is up around the upper chambers of the king's chamber in the Great Pyramid where they went, Daniel Brinkley, and they were digging years ago. And, and we had some rocks that were brought down and we were just calling it illegal tunneling going on. This was all in the area of the body of Osiris. Do you think then that this could possibly mean, and this may sound very strange, but that he could be in a suspended animation? Uh, this is the way I would interpret it. Or <laughs> in some strange twist of all this, me, in the paranormal sense of, of all this, what has energized me and brought me into this arena? where A, I'm a navigator moving ships around the world. I get out and I have these ideas of the pyramid as a processor of light and I have the mechanics to break it all down celestially, solar-wise and understand all this. But then in the very, very beginning, a field of energy uh, came through me and I went back on the computer and keyed up that day an hour and looked and I saw the star Alnitok in line with the pyramid meridian and it kind of scared me in some sense because I didn't know what happened and I've always been looking for things that could have happened, but I wasn't sure that that entity of Osiris came into me and woke me up and gave me my vision in life and what I'm supposed to be doing because it's not been easy to take and write patents on the Great Pyramid mm. to control sunlight and put it into the public because in that process, the government, our own government here in America has stolen my best work off of these patents really? in the solar one power plants out in Daggett and basically refining light down for 2,000 ambient temperatures up to 50,000 times the ambient temperature using tertiary systems and knowing your position, calculating the sun, you can control this light much easier. Mm -hmm. Well, they didn't do that before they were exposed to the patents of my work using the pyramid to do such a task. Right. So with all that, it's like an awful journey to get the knowledge out because you're dealing with Egyptologists, no, the, this is a tomb for Pharaoh, no, it's a power process, and then you patent it, and then the government takes it, and they've got it in the Golden uh, uh, Colorado Research Laboratories doing things that you wouldn't even imagine. Oh, really? But that's them taking my things and the Egyptians suppressing it, so I've had mm. this life of struggle to get, and I appreciate the time to even sit here and share with your well, listeners. Well, we're glad you're here. You really are. <laughs> but half hour is so <laughs> fast to go. That's why you're going to come back again. G all right. <laughs> I have no problem. Again you know, and again. You know this wall we spoke about on last week's show that you said they're building a 44-foot wall? 40, it's at least 40 feet high. Does I mean, this mean to you 
that they are going to release some kind of very important information uh, yes. over the next couple of years? Well, in the, in the sense of the things that if the Ark of the Covenant is in the bottom of the pyramids and Osiris is wow. up above, and if you've got a causeway that's a thousand feet long and 120 feet wide, 40 feet high, going between the Sphinx up toward the pyramids and then causeways going up toward the second pyramid and to the back of the Sphinx and all this activity underground, they had to put something in there. And they told me that within, I guess this is a year ago, mm -hmm. so we got maybe two more years. They said three years from that time that a lot of this would, would, would be made would known to out. the public. So this is sort of a precursor if I'm following myself and my research close to the ground as to why this wall is going up, these would be the, 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 the points mm. of issue. Do you think, Larry, that people would prefer to keep this whole Egyptian thing a mystery rather than not knowing? Percentages, some yes, some no, some want it, some don't, you know, it depends because this literally will tamper with the, the doctrines of religion. It's going to change everything. Uh, uh, everything. We're going to have to rewrite the history books here. They are, and they should be, because the, the world as we know it is older than 7,000 years. I mean, we're dating human existence now back a million, two million, and it could go, uh, you know, even further. Mm -hmm. So we really don't know. We don't know the universe. We've got big bangs that are bigger than our big bang coming from 12, 14 billion years out into the universe. Uh, Magna stars just now going off that could short circuit the planet. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. the universe is changing as well but because stars are so imperceptibly non-motion because the universe is so big that when we see stars, we've got galaxies that have billions of stars just like us and we're going through a 250 million year circuit. So actually 65 million years of boom and then before it's 251 back, the top and all its constants are back. But mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's all plays in this where we've, we've got a, a, a wash machine of history that only certain things come up because Literally, when you herald the new age, like say this is the new age of light, that the signals the demise of, of all the prior way with which we, we regulate life. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden we're using free solar energy instead of fossil and nuclear fuels. Uh, that's a big shift in the paradigm of, of, of our purpose in the universe. We don't architecturally build to alignment with the universe. Mm -hmm. Why are all these old ancient exactly. structures that way? Exactly. Well, let's take a look at this uh, next slide, Larry, and if you can talk us through this. Well, Fibonacci. Are you familiar Fibonacci? with him? The no. golden mean. The golden mean. Where I know it's one, the golden three, mean. And it's the two numbers before added, and, and they create a spiral. Right. right. Well, this reverse engineering of that spiral in relationship to the Giza Plateau will reverse engineer this uh, in the drawing back to a, in the drawing that's a mathematical point. But what in this drawing that was done, they don't give you latitude and longitude. Now, where is that spot? So I reversed Joe Jockman and Rocky McCollum's work and went to that where the beginning zero is and found the piece of the structure as a keystone on the north entrance of this location. And then the rumors that people come and they've dug and the guys, this the antiques mafia, take things from there and then somebody's killed. And antiques mafia? Yeah, th this Good is Lord. all around that. And this is a mango grove right next to a cemetery at the south end of the village. And anybody can go there, you know, it's not like it's, it's there, but when you're walking around, what are you looking for? It's just a, a field of mango. But then when you trip over a piece of stone and then you dig more and then you find, oh my God, this is the keystone to the entrance on the north side because it's got the letter N. And wow. uh, these are things that I've emailed you for, you know, like when we insert these sure. photographs to coincide with these conversations. But you'll see that keystone, and that's from the very beginning of the Fibonacci, mm -hmm. which is an infinite going out, and it gets bigger and bigger throughout the universe. And right. then the reverse of that, like a megaphone, if somebody's transmitting, then it comes into a foci. So I used to sit out there at that spot and, and do the spirals and go out into the universe and then come back. But, you know, I mean, what could I do? Yeah. I don't have license to dig, but I know right. that these are, I mean, scientifically I'm there. I'm there at the skills of a navigator. I mean, I move 10 feet and I'm watching one digit on my GPS. So I know that I can maneuver very, very accurately through this place. Right. That's but, what that one does. Okay. Let's take a look at the next one that we have here. <coughs> that we're bringing up. Oh, this was the light that you were talking now, about. Now, this is then. what happens to sunlight as it reflects off of the Great Pyramid. 
Isn't that right? magnificent? This is a model that I used in the patent process to show that I could take light on the north side with the sunlight hitting it, there's a reflection over there. And by putting mirrors in that field of reflection, I could concentrate that light back to the apex as a source of power. And that was, in a sense, the demonstration of my system to get the original patents that, that I have on using the geometry of the pyramid to control sunlight. Right. So that, and then when we, you'll see another picture where we're moving light with the picture of the Giza Plateau to scale behind it. Well, these are just drawings that, right. that supersede the actual work. So I built a little model and put it on the satellite photograph, which we'll see. But it's sort of letting you see the light reflecting off of the Great Pyramid. And then if those mastabas and structures around it, what role do they play in controlling that light back mm -hmm. so they could use it as a source of power? Right. So I have photographs going down the, the left and right sides of the pyramids to find out what day that light strikes that building, photograph it, and so I've got a very whole detailed, series. very detailed, isn't it? It's yes, yes. so detailed. And to do it independently yes. is self-financed because all the monies of the royalties and the patents, the government won't pay, and mm -hmm. this is the GPS location that we're looking at now, mm -hmm. and a piece of uh, petrified tree that's right. sitting there right beside it, but this coordinate that's on that GPS will take you to the beginning of Fibonacci. Right. That's what this one is right here. There was also something uh, very interesting that we will pull up a picture shortly of, and uh, you showed me this, this picture that was the entrance to someone's house, and in the actual wall, there's a picture of what looks like a little Martian, a little astronaut holding a flag. I loved photographing the architecture of the village, as you're talking about. And each one of these old homes, they're built out of the oldest stone with the rock with coins, so I know they're not modern constructions. These are very old. They're the same time frame as the pyramid itself. And in this one that you're talking about, it looks like a little E.T. Yes, And he's got shoes on with mm -hmm. heels, and he's holding a flag, and there's some strange design in it. but. And two cats either side. On either side yeah. with little pyramids underneath. bushes growing out of the, yeah. the pyramids underneath them. Now, that architecture, has I have never in my life seen anything like it. But I photographed every door that I could find of this nature. Some of them have, uh, they're just incredible mm -hmm. in the designs. But mm -hmm. this one, when I got to it, and these are homes that people come up and they find the existing doorway and then they build their mud brick and then they recapture it leaving that piece which mm -hmm. was still standing mm -hmm. and then when you go on the other side of those doors and you find I mean it's it's awesome right. but that little guy if ever I was to say the people are from another world this reminded me of something off-world right. I'm here I've got my flag I've conquered I've this landed. place <laughs> yes and and to see the little head and it, it, yes. it, it just looks like a little ET it does, and I hope that the people, can, uh, the viewers, can see that quite clearly uh, that we're showing there, which has to. All right, in their village, he's somewhere in the. If anybody's following it, he would be in this area here because all these houses in this area were covered with sand in the 1800s, and now the sand is gone, and people have built and be built. But it's sort of no tourist goes through here. But if you take it from the archaeological point where I'm interested in old things, mm -hmm. you can start to see patterns of a city that is now being hidden by the, the modern village of the pyramid today. Right. And it's underneath this village that the giant that they're talking about is there. And then down here in this area, uh, we I still can't about get over that giant. I'm still stuck on the giant. Now, you see this little clump of trees. This yes. building in this little piece here that you go down, and that's the one that is the access to the to all this underground 60-foot basalt boat and and and. Right. Now, in my way, where I'm talking with the police about this, and I'm telling him that my friends have gone down in and seen all this, and he says to me, "But I thought they covered that back up." You know, so he's confirming th this for me, and I just sort of joke. I say, no, no, there's another entrance, just to sort of throw him off, but right, I got the validation right. that this is actually right. here. Right, and of course that little guy, you know, we, we, we just call him a little Martian, but I don't know how much our viewers are following he's the whole He's not hieroglyphic, Egyptian he's not pharaonic, and yet he is in the village of the pyramid itself. I mean, wow. look at the location and, and this, because I'm looking for those things too you know, a, 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 a 
the, the records. Mm -hmm. Where did they come from? Right. What, how can someone accumulate such knowledge to, to do this? Because we haven't even done this. If you looked at the pyramid and the constants that are there, processional, uh, solar year, sidereal year, the animalistic year, all the, the Einstein, Kepler, Newton, Copernicus discovering math constants, etc. Mm -hmm. Independent throughout history. Put them all in a room and say, now take all the things you discovered and build me a structure and tell me that that structure is going to control sunlight. That's sort of like you already know the answer and you're going to tell them what to do, or do they as discoverers tell us what to do with that discovery? Mm -hmm. We've taken it and modern the 20th century out of their discoveries. Right. From being a flat world to a round world and latitude and longitude and time and this, come back into the modern time. Mm -hmm. But now if we looked at Einstein's constant and says, okay, how come it's encoded in the indentations of the pyramid? Why is it offset by the passages? This same number that you rediscovered is built throughout this stone structure. Now, that's what I'm trying to say is that there is no modern group sitting down to contemplate something like this. Mm -hmm. But through reverse engineering, we can see what they had to know and, and, and discover Put it, it together. by reversing it. How long is your research going to go on for, Larry? How long do you see yourself doing this? <laughs> what do you say? Well, I'm 50, <laughs> almost five now, in right. another couple of months. And I've been at it since I've been 29, more or less, on a focus. And I, I, I wish I knew the answer. I don't have, it's like, as long as it can keep my interest, I'll go. Right. You know, do it, do it, do it. You know, whether well, I have we. my money or someone else's money, but the idea is to learn it, but don't just lose it. But by doing shows with you and, and others like Jim Rogers or Ted right. Lohman and, right. and the, you know, that, that I do TV shows with, I get to share with, with your listeners and hope to gosh, somebody out there is listening and can see that this comes from my heart. Right, absolutely. This isn't something somebody pays me to come up and do. I mean, you couldn't pay somebody to sit in a... I mean, it's like a swamp sometimes. There's mosquitoes, there's insects, there's this. And why me? Why did I get fun. scanned? And why mm -hmm. did my life get diverted from being mm -hmm. full in navigation and re Absolutely. retiring and have an income from the Navy? You know, mm -hmm. I, I got pulled up and <laughs> sent another Larry, way. Larry, we thank you so much for coming by to see us. Please come back, won't you? And we just want to show everybody this book. Larry recommends you to take a look at this book. This is an awesome book. And check out Larry's website once again. And that is LarryHunter.com and more information with Larry on Let'sTalkParanormal.com and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.